Jesus fucking Christ. I raged so hard, my phone overheated. No, the thing was, I was holding my phone up in the sun. It started heating up my fucking phone and it like it, it automatically fucking stopped so I guess before it fucking exploded just like I was about to talking about the fact that they actually booked Curtis Axel of the social outcast Curtis fucking Axel yes that fucking Curtis Axel against our truth on a fucking paper no not raw not smackdown not superstars not fucking main event not fucking uh uh, the Saturday morning slam that was fucking on a pay-per-view. The pay-per-view right before WrestleMania. Fast lane. Right before the fucking main event. Curtis Axel in our truth in a two-minute match. This is all I got to say about that. Fuck those motherfuckers. I mean... Like I said, and I just said this in part one of the review, if they ain't going to fucking take this pay-per-view seriously, if they ain't going to take this fucking product seriously, if they ain't going to take Raw, their characters, their lack of storylines, I was going to say storylines, but lack thereof, and they ain't going to fucking give a shit, they're just going to keep on booking Owens and Ziggler to the end of fucking time. I'll be sitting in the fucking uh, rocking chair. <laughs> hey there, Shani! So, on this episode of Raw, because this is how long I'm going to be here on YouTube watching fucking wrestling. Oh, it's there, Sonny. Uh, I was watching the pay-per-view there. I was watching Raw. Oh, yes, it's Raw. It's fucking 2058. And uh, Ziggler and Owens, they were still wrestling. They're part-timers now, but they came back and they wrestled another match. Them newfangled wrestlers are still fucking wrestling. <laughs> I hate this. Oh, I hate it. I'm gonna give it a zero out of ten. Ooh, ah! See what I'm saying? I'm gonna be sitting here as an old man with fucking cobwebs in my ears. Fucking ah, ah! Yo! Can still be fucking reviewing this shit. It's been fucking 2058. Who the fuck wants to sit here in 2058? And still be talking about fucking Curtis Axel and R Truth matches. Because the way how this is going, that's the way it's going to fucking be. Why the fuck? Who? Who? I don't mean to sound like fucking New Day. Somebody fucking shoot me. But for God fucking sakes, who the fuck decided to put... Was this Vince or was this somebody on creative? I don't fucking know. But it's like, who would fucking put this on a pay-per-view right before the main event? Now, I know this is the cool-down match. But what exactly were we cooling down from? What what match was it? There wasn't even a match before that. It, it, it was the fucking um the peep show, the fucking cutting edge peep show. What the were they trying to purposely suck the fucking life out of this fucking show? Like on purpose? Well, I mean, I'm just trying to straight up fuck it up. I mean, this fucking felt like somebody put a fucking tube up my ass and sucked my fucking brain straight out my fucking ass. I know that sounds very, very fucking gross and disgusting, but I was fucking disgusted by this show. It was fucking disgusting and gross. So really, in comparison, that's not that fucking bad when you really put it... You know, um, into those terms when you really think about it along those lines. It's pretty fucking tame in comparison. Who the fuck? Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? You did not put Curtis Axel in our truth and... Oh, it, it, Brad! Brad! There was a storyline between Goldust and our truth Go fuck your fucking self. What storyline... Formative. What? Why is Goldust someone who's a, gonna be fifty pretty fucking soon? Need to be teaming with a fucking job or fucking joke like r Truth. Could r Truth have been something in WWE besides a fucking job or he's playing a fucking retard? Yes, 
That is his character. He's a retard who doesn't even know what time of year it is. Great fucking character. People are laughing their asses off. Our truth is funny. <laughs> you know, it's really fucking funny. The lack of intelligence you have for enjoying such a stupidly fucking put together character. Is this a character to make a fucking joke out of a guy who once looked like he could have been truly over? When they made him a part of the awesome truth... And they were taking over WWE. If they actually put some time and dedication into that fucking storyline. And it didn't just fucking end it in like a couple of months. It could have actually been something. They could have been a team that was really talked about for a while. Our truth was starting to really get a rise from the crowd. But then after Cena buried him. And they tried with it. I mean our truth was in the ring with the fucking Rocket Survivor Series. I can't stress that enough. I've said that time and time again. Fast forward five years, well, not even five years, four and a half years, and what the fuck am I looking at right now? What am I looking at? I'm looking at our truth in a pathetic fucking match. He's at, Gold Dust is his partner. They're doing like, you know, uh, like gay jokes and stuff. The fuck is this fucking shit? You know, we should be getting Goldust versus Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. Brother versus brother. An epic storyline. They already missed out on an opportunity to have Dusty Rhodes get involved. Before the man died, he could have had one last hurrah. Instead of being a fucking, you know, trainer in NXT, a fucking agent, he could have been involved in one last great storyline with Cody Rhodes and Goldust. But McMahon didn't want to do it. Do you know how great that would have been? Dusty Rhodes trying to get Gold Dust and Cody to see eye to eye, you know, and, and the storyline, it could have been fucking great. But instead, they took a big fat fucking dump on both guys, turning one into a fucking a star faced fucking goof. That makes fucking cat hissing noises. And Gold Dust is pretending to be, you know what this is? Do you people even realize what this fucking is? It's a poor imitation of the Booker T gold dust things like our truth in the restaurant. It was like Booker T and gold dust in 7-Eleven and Booker T was freaked out by him. I mean, first of all, let's also look at what's going on here. Our truth is a black man. Booker T is a black man. <laughs> Wow, whoa, blowing your mind there, right? What, you know, what, why? It's like, it's so pathetic. It's like two wrestlers that have fucking, that have fucking dreadlocks. Two black guys with dreadlocks that both perform a scissors kick as a, as a fucking finishing move pretty much. You know, do you people not fucking see that? Do you guys not even fucking see that? <sighs> Fuck's fucking sake. Fucking sake. By the way, I got a new tattoo. It's, it's peeling a little bit. But anyway, it's the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. Figure I'd fucking talk about something more interesting than these fucking developments on this goddamn pay-per-view and product. I mean, for fuck sake. I mean, it's like the story. I I didn't even really talk about this on Raw because a lot of times I skip over a lot of backstage stuff because I'm already saying way too much about the in-ring stuff and the in-ring promos. And a lot of times the backstage shit is just so meaningless. It doesn't even bear repeating. But they decided to go ahead and book this. But like there's nothing going on between our truth and the social outcast. So putting this on a pay-per-view. A pay-per-view is resolved for TV matches that, that need to be resolved. You know, that's what it's supposed to be reserved for. That's not supposed to be for random matches, for whatever. It's not another Raw. It's not another SmackDown. It's a fucking pay-per-view. It's the pay-per-view right before... I mean, No Way Out used to be good. 
you know, the pay-per-view right before WrestleMania. It didn't just used to be a fucking nonsense pay-per-view. It actually used to be good. It used to feature a lot of fucking uh, good shit on there. The Stone Cold, Triple H, two out of three falls. Um, you had the NWO debuting um, on No Way Out. Um, Mick Foley and Triple H in a Hell in a Cell. The, the fucking legendary fucking stuff happened in fucking February. Unforgettable moments. Now we're in 2016, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting more unforgettable moments, but instead we're watching Curtis Axel versus fucking R-Truth for fuck's sake. And all it's in the name of is copying a storyline from 2002. What, Goldust and R-Truth, are they going to win the tag titles? Obviously fucking not. They're not going to. So what the fuck is the point? I spent way too much time on this fucking match. Fucking nine minutes talking about... And, and I already was talking about it for like a minute. Fucking screaming like a maniac for a fucking solid minute in the previous vid. So let's talk about the main event already. Wait, there's nothing else, right? There was nothing else. All right. Then, um... Roman Reigns defeated Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose in the triple threat match. I'm not even dancing around it. You guys already knew what the result was going to be. They powerbombed Brock Lesnar through two tables. The match was okay, but it came nowhere close to being as good as the Cena, Rollins, and Brock match from Royal Rumble in 2015, more than a year ago. That's, that's going to go down as probably Brock's best triple threat match of all fucking time. Uh, you know, I, th th there's no bones about it. That, that was his best fucking triple threat. Now, I know you could say that there were other triple threats. There was um, Brock, Big Show, and Undertaker, I think it was, um, from Vengeance. I think that was the pay-per-view. Anyway, um, in 2003, sounds about right. But anyway, you know, I think that one was probably better, the Cena-Rollins one. Um, but uh, this, you know, was not as good, basically also because we already knew the fucking result was going to happen. People were actually saying they thought Ambrose was going to win. Are you fucking stupid? I know it, it, Brad, it's just a wrestling show. It's just a pin. Yeah, but... Let's be honest here for a minute. Why do you people, you know, I understand maybe if you're new to this shit, you're 12 years old, 13, whatever. But if you're like my age and you've been watching this product for a while and you're like, you're watching this and you really think Ambrose is going to fucking win, are you fucking retarded? Honestly. I mean, let, let, let's stop pretend. Like I said. Let's just fucking call a spade a spade already. Why the fuck do we pretend to live in a fantasy world where we think that the WWE is unpredictable and it's like actually producing good shit? You fucking knew the way how it was. The only logical uh, result for this match was Triple H and Roman Reigns. It was Dean Ambrose and Triple H. Yes, I know they were the last two in the Rumble, but the story is about... Roman Reigns and Triple H. Roman Reigns beat up Triple H at TLC. What do you think? They're just going to ignore that fucking storyline? All that shit with Vince McMahon and Roman Reigns it was horrible shit. It was terrible television and a terrible fucking storyline that was poorly executed and poorly written and poorly put together and poorly received. It was meant to copy the Stone Cold Vince McMahon angle from fucking over a decade ago. And it, and it failed epically. It fucking failed epically. No crowd reactions. It, it, all it did was get like negative reactions from the internet and the live crowds. There was nothing, nothing fucking good about it at all. But anyway, you're still going to go with that story only because that's WWE. They, they don't change plans. It's set in stone because it doesn't matter that the ratings are falling. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter that no one's showing any interest in the fucking buildup, even though it's it, it's bad. No, nah, we're still going to have it because people are going to like it regardless. Yeah, keep with that fucking attitude, WWE. That's why the fucking numbers are going down there in your ratings. Because you know best, right? You fucking know best. Just keep going the way that you're going. Nobody wants to see Triple H as champion. No one wants to see Roman Reigns as the top guy. 
the ratings indicate that maybe it's not maybe it's because people nobody wants to watch a three-hour show of just even more uneventful stuff I mean, for fuck's sake, we just had Curtis Axel and R-Truth on the fucking pay-per-view right before this match. This is why no one's fucking watching because, I mean, like, you obviously don't give a fuck. And if you don't give a fuck, why the fuck should we give a fuck? You know what I'm saying there? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not really, uh, it's not really something I need to really, um, put a lot of brain power into. You know, I don't need to eat a lot of fish and shit to fucking have brain food and fucking come up with this. It's, I said it's calling a spade a spade. It's just being, stating the fucking obvious. I'm not doing very, anything very articulate or anything like that. I'm just saying basically, this shit is just, it's boring. It's, it, it shows why no one's watching the show. It's because it's, it, it's boring, predictable bullshit. Not a bad match. Um, you know, I'll give this one three stars as well. I didn't really enjoy it any more than the AJ um, Chris Jericho match. Um, you know, three stars really. It was, you know, nothing really too epic. Not really one of the better performances from any of these guys. We've all seen them in better matches. And, you know, um, also... I would have liked to see the Dudley boys get involved. You know, these were, they're, they're beating up Ambrose and Roman Reigns and all it leads to is a match on SmackDown. It could have been epic. You know, Paul Heyman could have been pulling out all his resources, having the Dudleys attacking um, Reigns and trying to make him lose, you know, adding to the conspiracy of everybody trying to stop Reigns from reaching the top. But they don't take that route. Because why? Because, it, you know, it would be too good, right? You know, I don't know. I think, like I said, when I saw that happen on Raw with the attack of the Dudleys, I thought it would be good. You know, those are Heyman guys. Those are ECW guys. You know, uh, it would show that Heyman is pulling his resources. He's underhanded. It would play into the Heyman role. Instead of having him come out there every night, my name is Paul Heyman and state the same fucking bullshit over and over about the Undertaker streak. How about doing something, advancing the Heyman character, you know, showing uh, more depth to him they hold you know that you know he's a guy that has money and that he has resources and he's got people in high places you know add some intrigue to this show do something to make it seem out of the ordinary for god's sake because this ain't even ordinary anymore this is this is not extraordinary this isn't ordinary this isn't even bad it's fucking terrible I mean, like I said, the match is okay, but eventful. Make it eventful. Make shit happen. Do different things during the match to change it up. Do run-ins. Do surprises. Something. Something. You know, and, and at the end, Roman Reigns and Triple H are face-to-face -face and everything. And I could say that, you know, maybe they could brawl a little bit at the end. But, you know, they got to do that epic pose in front of the, you know, the mania sign. But... You know, Triple H has been doing nothing for fucking weeks. Not even a fucking promo to talk about the guys vying for the championship. You know, it just, it looks like a fucking placeholder. What the fuck is the point of giving him the belt? Were they not just better off having Reigns win the Rumble? Making him look like, you know, he faced all the fucking odds and what, you know. I know you could say it would be kind of unbelievable, but... It would have been better, it, 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 you know, instead of having just Triple H is just going to, you know, have the title and just hold it. He doesn't even appear for like three weeks straight. He appears like once in the back, once in the ring, and then, you know, that's it. And then he's just going to build up for Mania and he's going to lose the belt at Mania. And that's the reason why they gave him the title, just so he could give it back to Reigns. What? What is this? What? How does this make any sense? How is this logical? Why give a guy a belt so he could just hold it, just fucking hold the belt until the the guy who just had the belt can win it back from him? Because that's gonna put Reigns over. A guy that everyone is sick of, Triple H. Against a guy that's that someone who's been around a lot less time that's all that everybody's already sick of in Roman Reigns. These two guys wrestling. Uh, do they really think 
that the crowd is going to be invested in this match. And this time, remember, there's no money in the bank. Uh, you know, remember last year, everybody shitting on Reigns and Brock? At least we had that, you know, it actually turned out to be a pretty good match. Even if it wasn't for the Reigns, uh, for the Rollins cash, and it still would have been a pretty good match at the end of the day. But the thing is, it's like, now there's no fucking, nobody's going to be there to save this match. You know, from, from being shitty with a surprise cash. And there ain't going to be no surprises. There ain't any possibilities of surprises. Hey, maybe I'll be wrong. But the, the chances of there being a surprise is like 5%. They're just going to they're just gonna have Reigns beat Triple H with a spear. Maybe Triple H will go for the sledgehammer. And Reigns will maybe hit him with the sledgehammer. Or spear him before he gets to use the sledgehammer. You know... Uh, and that's going to be it. It's going to be like, oh, Triple H beat the game. Oh, so this means that, you know, this is our guy. He's going to be super over now. Fuck that fucking bullshit. No one is going to give a fuck. No one is going to give a single flying fuck that Roman Reigns beat Triple H. It's just, it, it, it's simple facts. No one is going to give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Do you give a fuck? If you do give a fuck, then I don't know. You have probably haven't been watching for that long because everybody I fucking know that's been watching uh, just as long as me or longer or a little bit less is not into Triple H, not really into Roman Reigns. Most people on here, even though a couple of months people were defending Reigns. Most people now have gotten off that stupid bandwagon and realized that he sucks, he's boring, and all that fucking shit. So, with that said, um, yeah, uh, Roman Reigns, uh, you know, Triple H, this is a match just, you know, setting, it's set up for disaster. There, there's nothing to look forward to here because we already know the result. We already know that maybe the match might be decent, but it's really going to be very uneventful when you think about it. He already won the belt twice. Roman Reigns is going to be a three-time champion. He won the belt for the first time in November. Then he wins it back a couple of weeks later. Four weeks or something like that, like a month later, I guess you could say. Then he loses it. And then he's going to win it back again. A three-time champion in that short time span. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. I mean, how lame. How much lamer could it fucking get? I'll answer that for you. It can't get any fucking lamer. That's about it. That is the maximum lameness something could fucking get. Fuck this fucking pay-per-view. I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. Maybe a 2 out of 10. Fucking 2 out of 10. Go fuck your fucking self. Fuck this pay-per-view. Fuck Triple H. Fuck Roman Reigns. Fuck Ziggler and, Owen, uh, and Kevin Owens matches. Rematches title matches, fuck all that fucking shit, fuck Curtis Axel and R-Truth having a fucking two-man meaningless fucking match on a fucking pay-per-view to promote a tag team that won't even fucking win the thousand, fuck all this fucking shit, fuck their bad ratings, fuck Raw, fuck SmackDown, fuck Main Event, fuck Superstars, fuck all that fucking shit up your fucking ass, motherfuckers. Best lane sucked. Yeah.